One, two, three, four. Sawadee ka. Um, I'm Ann Norman from the Thai Alliance for Humans. And um, this is Dr. Piangden. I'll let him introduce himself, also from the Thai Alliance. He's going to wave. <laughs> hi, hi, Ann. So, uh, hello, all friends from around the world. Uh, yes, Sanetin San or Dr. Piang Din Rak Thai, um, Chair of the Board of Directors. And Anne is our Executive Director, immediate Executive Director, and now acting as Deputy Executive Director. So we are here to keep updates about the human rights situation in Thailand. Uh, we try to appear here as often as we can, hopefully once a week, or if need be. Uh, we may come as you know uh, the situation calls for and so what do we have today um, unfortunately yeah we have so many things that it's hard to put it all into a finished statement so um, we just recently made a, a statement on Friday and we reported that unfortunately there seems to be three more Lay's Majesty victims who disappeared who list, used to live in Laos. Now, the last three um, Lay's Majesty victims who disappeared before these three, um, two of them were found floating in a river. Their faces smashed in, rope tied around their neck, and they were disemboweled with a cement post stuffed into their body. So the fact that three more have now disappeared is, is obviously extremely alarming and um, people are, are very upset, obviously, especially the families. Um, our report on Friday was picked up and followed up on by leading um, international rights, international human rights organizations, including Human Rights Watch and Amnesty International, and it's being reported in international news outlets. So everybody is paying attention. So if Thailand does have these three people, they should um, uh, release them now before they get counted up with the other um, people that we presume are assassinated. So if they have them, it's in their interest to uh, release them, to uh, you know, show the world that you know, if they're in custody, that they're being treated well, and to give uh, the families access and give lawyers access and make sure that all their rights are respected if they're going to have a trial for something. Um, right. Uh, but uh, uh, that was on Friday, so I won't go over all that, but I'll just um, tell you more about one of the three um, uh, Lay's Majesty victims that disappeared. Um, so what happened was that we reported that three political dissidents who were recently refugees in Laos were deported from Vietnam to Thailand in the late afternoon of May 8, 2019, so, so just recently, after going silent on social media around January 27. Now, the most famous of these three was Mr. Chu Chip Chu Chuasut. His name, um, he's more famously known as Sanam Luang. And he was the leader of the Thai Federation organization, which means he had a, um, a broadcast and he had followers who all wanted to see Thailand have a federal state uh, rather than to be, um, have a monarchy. He wanted to, to he, he was advocating for a change in the system of government. He was doing it peacefully by talking about forms of government and um, uh, he had two associates who disappeared with him, and their names were uh, Sayam Tiwa Tirawu, but he's better known as Kaunio Matmuang. And Kaunio Matmuang means, um, uh, means mango and sticky rice, so it's easier for me to remember that name. And mm -hmm. this person, very sadly, was very, very young. Um, he had to flee the country after the coup when he was 29 years old because he was an actor in the play Zhao Sao Ma Ba, or Wolf Bride, that was done at Tamasat University in commemoration of a student massacre at that university in October 6, 
1976. Two actors in that play have already served two years in prison for acting in the play. He escaped uh, the country. He's a student, a, and, and the uh, articles in Thai describe him as nerdy looking with thick glasses. He worked installing air conditioners while studying at Ram Kong Hang University. Am I mispronouncing that? You're doing that well. University? You're doing well. Okay. And his family are are rallying around him and they're obviously beside themselves. Um, they are, you know, taking their complaint straight to the United Nations. And I think that um, Dr. Pingdon, you have some pictures of them uh, with signs demanding to know what happened to their son. Yes, I and do. you can see him with the thick glasses. And so basically this is a student, you know, a student who acted in a play. And this is very typical of the people who are disappeared by the junta. The junta wants you to think that these are, you know, radical revolutionaries. These are usually artists and uh, academics. That's usually who it is. Okay, and um, and then I, I don't know anything about the other person because I've only had so much time to research this, so we'll talk about that next time. But, okay. Uh, another person who was arrested on May 10, which is three days ago, she was deported uh, from from. Malaysia back to Thailand, just like we reported that these three uh, were deported from Vietnam back to Thailand. She was a woman in the same Thai Federation organization. Originally, she had been a follower of Sanam Luang in Thailand. And Sanam Luang uh, asked everybody who was listening to his show, who was part of the Thai Federation, to come out on December 5, which happens to be King Pumipon's birthday. Um, and on December 5, on the first day since King Pumipon's passing, he wanted his followers to come out wearing black shirts with a little flag symbol that's just about the size of a label. Um, so basically, they're wearing black shirts with a tiny little label that has a flag on it of the Thai Federation. And so this is their crime. It's a little peaceful protest that they did on December 5. Some of the people came out wearing black shirts. They held signs calling for a Thai federal state. And this woman's name was uh, Propan, and her last name isn't given out. She was 58 years old. And not only was she wearing a black shirt, but she was also handing out leaflets at a mall uh, with anti-monarchy messages on them. Uh, the size of this protest, it depends on who you ask, but um, it was either tens of people or maybe as many as 200 people um, who came out on that day wearing black shirts. Do you know, Dr. Pingdon, how many participated? Uh, they say something about a thousand. A thousand? Okay, yeah. great. Um, so about a thousand came out and tens were arrested. This woman was one of the ones arrested. She used to be a traditional massage therapist, and she was um, arrested at the mall on that day. She was let go, but um, after they questioned her, and they released her, but then just a few days later on December 8, just one day before the Cycling for Love event, which is where they were promoting King Vajira Longhorn in a bicycling event. She was re-detained at the 11th Army Regi Regiment together with eight other people. And two of these people were the wife and son of Sanam Luang. And uh, this was something that everyone noticed. Our organization complained very loudly that arrested not only the people wearing the black shirts, but the non-political wife and son of Sanam Luang. And that was obviously, obviously, um, just to put pressure on him. They grab up his family, um, detain them without anyone having access to them. They were detained until December 14, uh, and there was no 
uh, prosecution of them. And there was probably no offense in the first place. Um, they were just hostages to harass Sanam Luang. So she was arrested with them. Um, and she is being charged with being a member of a secret society. Well, she uh, fled the country and ended up in Malaysia and was about to get refugee status from UNHCR in Malaysia. And uh, somehow she got deported back to Thailand. And this is worrying because it seems that Thailand is doing a lot of deals with a lot of um, countries in the region doing trades to get their so-called Lay's Majesty suspects back. Do you have any comment about that, Dr. Pandin? <clears throat> Yes, I think uh, it's, it's really important to point out that uh, these people are refugees. I think uh, that's really the bottom line of what we are looking at over here. These are political dissidents who fled the country, uh, residing in hiding without any uh, official doc document for most of them. Uh, they are sometimes too afraid to, really to appear in public. Uh, to come out uh, about who they are. Uh, no, I would say probably no uh, international organizations that um, have the capacity of, uh, uh, you know, uh, guaranteeing their protection officially uh, have come out and really uh, uh, do what they are supposed to do. So these people are in hiding illegally in our neighboring countries. Uh, like Laos, Cambodia, Vietnam, and I know, as far as I know, some of them are in Cambodia, uh, Malaysia, and who knows, in Indonesia as well. And as far as I know, over 100 Thai political asylum seekers in Australia alone have been granted asylum. So the situation is really much bigger than uh, anyone uh, may have thought. Uh, and including, of course, the United States. So I, I, I hope course. that the people, you know, in my country realize that, um, you know, they might even even here, the United States might be infiltrated, and the same thing could happen here. Indeed, it hasn't yet that we know of, but uh, it could if we let them get away with it. Right, and I have I've been receiving warnings from different parties. Uh, uh, they all say the same thing, be careful, the junta has sent its officials, officers, army officers uh, in uniform or without uniform to the, the United States in order to uh, make a plan in order to get rid of the dissidents here in uh, the U.S. And we have quite a few over here, you know, Ajahn uh, Sunai, uh, former member of the parliament. Uh, we have uh, the former Minister of Interior who uh, came to the U.S. For, for asylum seeking and remain, he now remains in the U.S. He wants to fight the uh, dictatorship. So, um, you know, um, him included. And then we also have other people like uh, Nick Reagan, Joe Gordon, and of course, yeah. Annick San Fran, and I myself included. So yes. yeah, it's, it's really uh, uh, bigger than than one may may even you know think about or imagine. Now about the lady in in uh, Malaysia, and it is important to point out that she traveled to Malaysia with a document issued by UNHCR, guaranteeing her status as a person seeking political asylum. Right. And the and fact you know, that she was sent to Thailand, that is, I mean, to me, that's unbelievable. How right. can Malaysia send her back to Thailand? And Malaysia is not a country like with the worst human rights record in Southeast yeah. Asia. So I'm wondering what's going on there. Right. Well, I think that what's going on uh, is trades. You know, mm. we were so... Um, upset when Sam, what was her name, Sam Soka, something right. like that, was uh, traded from, she was a refugee in Thailand, sent back to Cambodia, mm -hmm. and her offense had been to throw a, a shoe at a picture of the dictator of Cambodia. 
Right. Now, Thailand has no feeling about that. You know, they don't care if somebody throws a, a shoe at the picture of the dictator of Cambodia, but they were doing a favor for the dictator of Cambodia in order to um, get something back, one suspects. Hmm. And when that happened, we were already worried about dictators doing trades and, and neighboring states trading their dissidents back and forth. But uh, uh, I was hoping I could, I have another piece of information that not everyone has, um, and I was hoping to, uh, to bring out this other piece of information. Mm -hmm. um, this is, I think, the, the best way to explain who was Sanam Luang and what was his Thai Federation organization. Hmm. The best way to explain it is, is to read what is very likely the last English language statement coming from the Thai Federation under Sanam Luang. It was probably written by him. It is signed January 5. He went silent after January 28, just a few weeks later. To fully appreciate the boldness of his statement, realize it was written just weeks after the bodies of former colleagues and fellow anti-monarchists were found floating in a river. Another mm. reason I'd like to read this statement is, it's not because I'm a member of the, of the, of the uh, Thai Federation, I'm definitely not, but um, if the state is illegally trying to silence someone, let's make it backfire. Let's all hear what that dissident was trying to say before they were silenced. This is what he was trying to say. And this is titled, Thai Federation Bulletin, Rejection of Coronation of Thai King Rama X. We declare our rejection of and denouncement of the coronation of Thai King Rama X, which is scheduled for May 4-6, 2019. It should be obvious not only to the Thai people, but also to the rest of the world, that the Mahadons, his current royal family, are not only currently colluding with the Thai military junta, but have ordered countless coups against the Thai people and Thai elected governments throughout history. They had a part in masterminding political instability in many right governments in the past, overthrowing elected governments by means of coups, and orchestrating the mass murder of citizens in concert with the Thai military. The creation of factionalized groups of citizens to destabilize electric government has been part of many Mahadon grand strategies to weaken democracy. The Mahadons promote a cult where royals are deemed demigods and untouchable, a strategy which gives rise to fascism. Also, natural resources and national assets were taken over for private benefit of the Mahadon family and their organization leaving the majority of Thailand's citizens poor, uneducated, uninformed, and subservient to their controlling power. And for anyone who's just coming into this at this point, it may sound like this is my statement, but it's not. It's Sanam Luang's statement that he made almost immediately before disappearing. So to read on, Thailand's modern political and military history contains transparent evidence of atrocities of physical and mental abuse, death and destruction of property that this family and their organization have bestowed on their fellow citizens. Thus, we, the Thai Federation, are looking for change, change from this dictatorial and fascist governing model to a model of federalism, such as that of the United States of America's, where citizens Hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, end quote. We ask that your country not support the Matadon family, and particularly that your country not participate in or send any representative to what Jira Longcorn's coronation event. We ask that you and your country recognize our deeds and intention to ch change Thailand for the betterment of its people and for the good of the world. We hereby sincerely hope for your understanding that you realize our position and determination under such an unjust and merciless regime. We are looking forward to your kind consideration and assistance, Thai Federation Organization, January 5, 2019. And again, for anyone who's coming in, I'm not reading a statement of my own. I'm reading a statement 
that was one of the last statements uh, that Sanam Luang put out in English before he disappeared. And I'm sure that the reason for his disappearance has something to do with those views right there. And um, those views are not exactly my views, but they are almost exactly my views. Um, I, would, I would have to say, and they are legitimate views. It is legitimate for someone to express that kind of an opinion. That is within the, uh, the realms of somebody's rights to free speech, to imagine a different form of government. You know, even here in the United States, I can say, I wish we had a monarchy. I couldn't mm -hmm. do it. You know, nobody would throw me in jail for saying it. Um, we're supposed to be able to talk in the abstract about what could be. And that's what Sanam Luang was doing. And um, uh, I'll let you uh, make any comments, Dr. Pandan. Okay. Yes, I think, um, well, uh, when it comes to ideas, people can propose ideas. And in a civilized country, democratic, uh, democratic country, uh, expressing ideas usually is not a problem. Uh, or even if, you know, the ideas that you try to spread is problematic, is probably illegal, illegal. Uh, it is necessary, though, that uh, the person in, in, in question or the person charged should be uh, given a fair trial, right? If there is an arrest, it has to be made, uh, you know, in public, made transparent. Uh, open uh, to uh, you know the uh, the uh, relatives, parents, wives, you know children. But uh, what happened to uh, Thai dissidents is usually sometimes scary, because it is it falls under what we call forced disappearances. And uh, as it has turned out, uh, many cases in many cases, those people who have been forced disappeared. Uh, uh, have been filed later to be dead with DNA yeah. proof and everything. So I think that is really another story when it comes to free speech and you know, the speech that is not really free. Uh, no, I mean the, the speech that is uh, right based on free speech principles and you know speeches that may be illegal, especially according to the laws in the dictatorial land like Thailand. Uh, in at present, but no. Regardless, uh, these people who have become political dissidents, they are f they fall under political prisoners. Now, political prisoners should be protected by international laws. So, the case of uh, the lady in Malaysia who was captured and deported to Thailand, I think that is something that the world will have to pay attention to. I'm very happy that the Human Rights Watch has just come out and condemned this act by the Thai authority and especially the Malaysian government. And I, I should have mentioned one other thing. Uh, this, this woman whose name is uh, Prapan, uh, she said that in, in jail, I guess, guess in Malaysia, she, she met another member of her group who was another woman who was there, you know, arrested for wearing a black shirt. Hmm. And so, you know, whenever we hear about these things, it's often only the tip of the iceberg um, of all the people who are being harassed. A lot of the families are embarrassed to, you know, have a, a relative who's a political dissident. And so um, you won't hear about it at all. So if we hear about one definite case, and that woman says she saw she met another woman in prison in the same situation, and this person is nameless, you know, we just have to remember that usually we're talking about the tip of the iceberg of some of these human rights abuses. And I'd also like to, to mention that on March 6, um, when the United Nations wrote to the Thailand's government about the disappearance and murder of Act exiled political activists, they were talking about four of them, mm -hmm. including the Surachai, uh, Gasolong, and Puchanat group, and also DJ Zunho. Okay, the, the three uh, reporters 
where um, the special re- that, that worked on this statement where the special reporter on extrajudicial summary or arbitrary executions, the special reporter on the promotion and protection of the right to freedom of opinion and expression, and the special reporter on torture and other cruel, inhuman, and degrading treatment or punishment. But they do include the, in this saying, um, you know, that these people uh, should have the right to free speech. And I'm trying to find that part of it. But uh, the fact that the reporter on the promotion and protection of the right to freedom of opinion and expression is part of this um, is, uh, is indication that they think that these people should have more space to um, express their views. Um, they also mention that Thailand hasn't passed a law for um, outlawing enforced disappearance. And this despite the fact that Prayut has a um, rubber stamp, you know, has had a rubber stamp uh, Congress or Parliament all this time. He could have done anything he wanted to and he hasn't passed this law that he promised to pass a long time ago. So we should, um, you know, along with the inter- other or- international organizations, pressure Thailand to pass a law against torture and enforced disappearance and ask why hasn't it been done? It, you know, Prayu said that he was going to take over the government to reform it and make it safe for democracy or something. <laughs> Why didn't he do all the obvious reforms that he really could have done, you know, uh, with a stroke of a pen, um, if he was going to do some of these, you know, uh, um, what do you call it, when you just do it by yourself? Do it by he yourself? Could've, he could have done some that would actually promote human rights, but he didn't. Uh-huh. Um, he's, he avoids this one for some reason, but... Uh, let me see if I have, I and I have another interesting um, uh, fact, little piece of information here that hasn't gotten out yet. Um, Dr. Ping, did you remember um, uh, the case of, uh, his name is Hei Silong. Uh, his... I, will, I will type it to you. In in Thai. I'm, I'm sure I'm mispronouncing. Should I continue to okay. mispronounce his name or should I? Uh, you, you can type it. I, I would love to know who it is too. Okay, I'm sending it to you uh, in, in, in Facebook. Do you see in Facebook? Uh, I can check. Well, the Thai Alliance got a, a tip. Somebody noticed, and this may not seem related at all because it happened in the 1950s, but um, there was a, 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 a political dissident, a, a Muslim who lived in the South, a Thai Muslim person. And his name is, uh, let me throw this through the uh, trans the translator so that I can pronounce it correctly. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Hai Suong. Very good. Hai Suong. Okay. So, um, this is the story of ha- Hai Suong. Uh, it says in the Thai version that um, he was an iman who was well known, a leader and scholar of the Muslim Thai people, especially in the area of the southern border provinces. In the English language version of the Wikipedia article, it says, labeled as a reformist and a separatist, he sought for greater recognition of the Jawi community and Patani. His motives for doing so was in response to General P. Boon Songkran's crimes, right? Song yes. Song Concept. Yeah, this is a mistake. Okay. Concept of Thainess. 
It was in response to General P. Boon Song Kram's concept of Thainess, in which every citizen has to subscribe to the ideology that it, that it is the duty of a Thai to be a Buddhist, speak Thai, and love the monarchy. Uh, so he disagreed with that. Um, going back to the Thai version of the story, um, this isn't in the English version. In the Thai version, it says that when he got out of jail, um, this is the end of the story. I'm skipping how he got into jail. Uh, and his name is, when he got out of jail, Hayi Salong was still menaced by the state power until during the dawn of Friday, August 13, 1954, after coming back from prayers in the morning, Hayi Salong with Mr. Ama Tomina, the oldest son, 15 years old, who had the duty of being the Thai interpreter as Hayi Salong couldn't speak Thai, were traveling from their own house in Pattaya province to the Royal Command of Security Police in Songkla province with two other supporters, altogether four people. Well, long story short, they totally disappeared. They're on their way, you know, uh, summoned to the security police. And so the actual dissident goes with, with uh, his son just to be an interpreter, only 15 years old, plus two other friends who happened to go with him. They all disappear. And that's the end of the story for a few years until the government uh, changes, the administration changes, and suddenly uh, it is possible to get some explanation and some investigation into this disappearance. Um, and so this is what happened. In the end, the policeman who actually did the killing confessed that he killed all four people in a bungalow along the seaside in Song Kla from a direct order over the telephone from the commanding police officer of Song Kla province and that he used a tight rope around the neck and totally disemboweled the corpse and by means of a bar of cement attached hid it in Song Kla Lake close to uh, Ga Nu Ga Mao and after everything was cleared up, divers were sent to look for the corpse, but with the passage of time, many years from the event, they did not find the corpse or a scrap of anything. The significance of this is that, you know, this happened in the 50s, but um, the method of killing is exactly the same as the most recent three assassinations. And um, so when you think, you know, this is just too horrible. It couldn't possibly have happened. It has happened, and it has been happening uh, so often that until you you know hear these stories over and over again, you don't quite believe it. But it has been happening for you know over 50 years. Um, so I just thought I would put that out there that um, you know when people say, well, this sounds like some kind of uh, weird conspiracy story. A lot of these stories sound, you know, horrible and shocking and too horrible to be true, but no, it's just the same old, same old for the past 60 years is what it is. And in this case, it was totally um, investigated and found to be state-sponsored. So I'll just let you uh, yeah. uh, add anything. Uh, sure. Um, you know, it has led us to um, the culture of impunity. I think that's really right. the things, uh, the, the the idea that lies behind all these uh, right. series murder. You know, yes. <laughs> um, uh, you, if you look at the Thai history, you see that um, uh, f forced disappearances or um, blunt murder. I mean, uh, massacre to a larger scale, larger scale, right. you know, we have had in 60 years, we have had at least six massacres happening. And <laughs> out of all these massacres, you know, uh, which were responsible for between, you know, 10, uh, 20, 30, 50, 60, 70, all, all the way until 100. This is which is which are just the uh, official uh, record numbers or numbers. But who knows, you know, the actual numbers may have gone much higher. For example, in 2010, 
a lot of people believe the death tolls uh, to have reached thousand instead of just one hundred. Yeah. So, but but out of all these uh, uh, massacres, you know, six of them in sixty years, but four or five or six, at least four in the past fifteen years. Yes. None of the perpetrators have been even tried. Yeah. The uh, yes. culture of impunity stems from the fact that these yes. people do it for nationalism. You know, it is always driven by nationalism and, importantly, uh, loyalty to the king, right. to the monarchy. So every time they would kill anybody, they would claim uh, national security, loyalty to the king as the license to kill. And right. this has been the reason why every time you talk about national security, every time you talk about loyalty to the monarchy, you have the privilege of killing anybody, you know, right. as, as a right, as, as a fully licensed act. So yeah. I think this is something that uh, Thais and uh, experts in Thai studies and international community will have to look into very seriously. If we allow this to go on, I think it's going to be, uh, it's not going to end. And given the fact that Article 112, you know, uh, is there, although under King Ramat X, it hasn't been uh, enforced strictly as before, but now we start to see a new kind of uh, threat, which is um, nationalistic, royalistic propagandas that throw hatred against anybody who would be who, who would seem progressive and they would be basket together as anti-monarchy and that leads to hatred extreme hatred and and uh, the uh, claim by the people who love the the monarchy you know as a, a person or the target for elimination and this is the, the trend that uh, the Thai society and international communities will have to uh, have a look at. We have to um, investigate further and we have to uh, observe more closely. And, and, and you will notice that um, one of the, the three people who is missing now, and if you listen to the, the dissidents, um, you know, from our maybe if you're just coming to this new you you consider them probably arrested and held someplace but the dissidents a lot of them are already like writing eulogies for these people right because they know the history and one of these people is very young and he was acting in a play commemorating one of these massacres his crime was reminding anybody that the massacre happened in 1976 and that was a massacre of about a hundred uh, university students and mm -hmm. they were murdered in such horrible ways that you know if if I described it you know this this uh, video wouldn't be rated PG anymore mm -hmm. uh, it was just too horrible because they murdered them in all kinds of um, strange and unusual ways and then desecrated the bodies um, and the killing went on for hours in at a university in the middle of downtown Bangkok and uh, it was state sponsor it was vigilantes it was the state it was everybody together just kind of going crazy in a big frenzy of killing um, of student protesters who were protesting uh, for democracy. So, uh, anyways, my point being that it was it was such a horrible event, and anybody who reminds other people of this event is suddenly, you know, a threat to security because they remind somebody that it happened. That's it. And so this poor person. Um, uh, Sayam, Sayam, Kaunio Matmuong, he's the one who acted in a play, and uh, like two other people who 
who were actors, they got two years in, in prison for acting in the play, and um, he fled the country to avoid that. So um, it, it just, you know, it's all connected. Yeah. And speaking of this, and it reminds me of the case of Eka Chai Hong Kang Wan. I mean, this is really something uh, that we that we need to pay attention to. It has been repeated many, many times. And when you told me he has been hurt nine times, I thought it was just like maybe three or four times. Right. Uh, you know, Eka Chai Hong Kang Wan. Can you tell uh, our audience who don't know him a little bit about what he is and what he does? Okay, well, some of this is from my memory, but um, I noticed at the beginning that he was being uh, targeted. And so I started writing about him, thinking, oh, I'll be able to prevent him from being targeted because I, you know, because they, they won't dare do it if, if, if we call them out. But of course, they do dare do it, even if you do call them out. So, um, so this is what I know off the top of my head. Um, that he was a lace majesty victim for two years. He sold some CDs of a documentary about um, King then Prince Wetjir Longhorn. Prince Wetjir Longhorn, who is now King Wetjir Longhorn, um, he sold CDs of an Australian documentary about uh, Prince Wetjir Longhorn and about Lay's Majesty in general. And so they interviewed different Lay's Majesty uh, victims and they told uh, some embarrassing, very embarrassing stories about Prince Wajira Longhorn and what he was like and the kind of hedonistic lifestyle he had. So uh, Ekachai went to prison for a couple years, maybe two or three years. Um, he got out and after getting out, um, he was one. He was the one person to protest uh, the disappearance of the historical plaque marking the end of absolute monarchy. Mm -hmm. So, kind of like it was Thai Independence Day, yes. And there was a plaque that was about the size of a plate that was put in the street on the spot where the revolutionaries announced the end of of absolute monarchy and that used to be like celebrated by everyone but um, as the atmosphere changed um, and there was kind of a slide backwards towards absolute monarchy this plaque suddenly disappeared and in in the middle of the night and was replaced with a plaque that said you should uh, uh, praise the king so this was just like completely outrageous. If anyone did it in the United States, I think that <laughs> there would be, uh, you know, uh, people marching with their guns to uh, Washington, D.C. But um, in this case, they were able to threaten most people into silence. Anyone mm -hmm. who mentioned that this plaque had been switched would, you know, be arrested and warned and let go. Um, well. On the day of, uh, you know, the Thai Independence Day, which was, what was it, June or July? What was it? Do you remember? Uh, uh, June. Was, June. June 24th. June, what was it? June 24th. June 24th. Okay, so on June 24th, um, uh, you know, they're told, do not celebrate this day to, you know, this year we're not going to celebrate because of the coup. Uh everyone's going to be quiet and Ekachai just couldn't stand it and so he took a bucket of cement and a replica of the plaque and marched into the middle of the street with his bucket of cement so that he could glue the replica down on top of the uh, uh, uh <laughs> of, of, of the other uh plaque uh -huh. and of course he was stopped even as he was uh, uh, uh approaching the 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 spot and he knew he would be a, a uh, stopped and taken off to jail and he was questioned there and he was let go but it was extremely gutsy move um, and and then at right right after that on Pumipon's King Pumipon's birthday everyone was supposed to be wearing uh, black right what were they yes. supposed to be wearing that day uh, uh, black 
Yes, I, I'm, just, I'm getting confused because I these other people got arrested for wearing black shirts, but those were black for the Thai Federation. But the, on this day, everyone was supposed to wear black. And he announced on Facebook, I'm going to be wearing red that day. <laughs> and red, of course, is the uh, symbol of the red shirts. And and so um, he, he in, in retrospect, when he was asked about it later, oh, he said he would wear a red shirt and do something surprising. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the um, police came to his his house and there was like, like you know like 15 police or something that came to his house and dragged him out the front door without saying anything and then they they played good cop, cop bad cop with him and and, and another group of, of police came and said oh we're so sorry that they treated you badly uh you know we're gonna talk with you uh, nicely and anyways they they gave him an, him an ultimatum they said they would take him to a resort Mm -hmm. during the, the king's um, funeral. Mm -hmm. Did he want to go to a re resort? And he said, no, he didn't. And they said, well, it's either that or jail. And he said, okay, I'll go to a resort. <laughs> and then they literally <laughs> took him to a resort because he wanted to wear a red shirt on that day. And they didn't want him being seen in a red shirt. And later when they asked him uh, in an interview, what were you planning to do that day? He said, I didn't even know. I didn't, I didn't think. I just got mad and I wrote it on Facebook. I hadn't made a plan. So, <clears throat> so you know, this is uh, two of the protests of Ekachai Hong Kong Wan. And then he did, did some other things. But um, when he went out, when he was attacked the first time, it was because he was protesting the... Um, about the watch scandal of the deputy dictator, deputy prime minister, um, who mysteriously owned, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of watches. Right. And so he was making fun of him by wearing a lot of watches and going to a protest with a big poster of how many watches he owned. And um, he was being investigated for corruption. Of course, he got off, but at that time, he was still being investigated. Coming home from that protest, uh, somebody rode by on a motorcycle and punched him and rode away again. And so a very strange kind of attack. On uh, January 23, again, he's coming home from something. Usually it's, it's coming home from a protest when this happened. He was punched in the face. Um, August 14, 2018, somebody poured fish sauce on him. And if you know about fish sauce, mm -hmm. um, it's very stinky smelling. Uh -huh. um, now, around at this time, I was thinking, you know, this is just bizarre. Why isn't anyone else being harassed in this way? It's almost like hard to believe, right? Yeah. But then it started escalating. August 22, he was beaten with wooden boards in front of his house. And so in each time, like, like, one or two or four people will come by. Um, their face is usually hidden with motorcycle helmets and just start attacking him for, for you know, three or four minutes and then run away. Um, January 19 of this year, he was attacked and punched in the face. January 27, um, this uh, attack was actually caught on a security camera. Somebody came by in the middle of the night, poured hot burning oil on his car, lit it on fire, and it ruined the paint. On March 5 of this year, he was attacked again with wooden boards or sticks. And I think that was in front of his house. Um, mm -hmm. On April 1, his uh, 2019, his car was completely destroyed, just burned up. So the first attack with the burning oil, I suppose they, they wanted to burn the whole car down, but they didn't succeed. On April 1, they burned the whole car down. So, um, and then just, was it yesterday or two days ago? Uh, yesterday. Yes, yesterday. Just yesterday, he was attacked so badly um, that he's in the hospital with broken bones this time. He's got broken rib, he was beaten in the face, he's got broken fingers, um, he's going to be in the hospital for a few days. 
and he's he's complained repeatedly and the uh, justice system ignores it and this last attack happened it's even more outrageous if you find out how this attack happened he was summoned to the courthouse so he took a bus to the courthouse somebody was riding on the bus had followed him onto the bus and was with him on the bus when he pulled out at the courthouse this one person kicked him off the bus pushes him off the bus four more people are waiting for him and beat him up so this was really planned one person riding with him on the bus four people waiting with, for him at the courthouse to which he was summoned beating him so badly that he ends up in the hospital with broken bones and there's guards standing in front of the courthouse, as you can imagine, doing nothing. You don't yeah. think guards at the front of a courthouse could take responsibility for this when they called them to the courthouse in the first place? <laughs> so um, this is the situation in Thailand. It's, like you said, impunity. It's impunity. Yeah. What worries um, me now, uh, and you know instead of the army officers firing at people which they did in 2010 you know mm -hmm. uh, t naked to the uh, world's eyes and uh, right now nobody is responsible for it uh, mm -hmm. even including the cases of uh, army officers shooting uh, you know old ladies uh, young nurses and you know uh, uh, arm free uh, bear, uh, you know, uh, 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 protesters inside the temple and for Buddhism, a uh, Buddhist, right. you know that that is really a cardinal sin, you know, to kill right. somebody in the boundary of the temple. Right. And, but that took place. And you know what? The court just came out and, and uh, passed a verdict that uh, right. we would not pursue with the case. Right. I mean, it's, it's just outrageous, I mean, to say the least. Uh, yes, and for, usually for the, the people, the people who get you know beaten and killed and thrown in jail are the people who are talking about some horrible massacre that happened. Those are the mm. people who get in trouble. All of the uh, energies are turned towards silencing people who have something important to say. That's Indeed. what it feels like. Indeed, everything important that needs to be said in order to. Uh, right. point to the problems in Thailand and lead to solutions will yeah. have to be silenced and that's that's, that's the, the repeated theme that we have seen now in case of uh, uh, abuses against uh, uh, Ekachai I think it's a, it's a worrying trend in that nowadays it's going to lead to what we call Khwa Pikat Sai which is the right wing killing the left wing you know uh, so uh, it has been used before, and you mentioned the massacre in 1976, in which you know uh, tens of uh, almost a hundred of uh, students were killed, and that that is the official record. But how many people actually were killed on that day? I think the history will have to be revisited. Well, and the I mean, if you just look at the, um, you could just Google. Uh, Thomasat University massacre and you can see so many bodies that it already in the video looks like more than the official 44 so right. I think the Wikipedia even says a hundred at this point right right now uh, what is special in in that um, massacre in 1997 uh, 1976 is that um, it's not just the ar army and police officers who committed the crimes but it's just the normal people uh, you pass me that picture of uh, you know a man being hanged onto uh, the tree the tamarind yes. tree with uh, another man using the um, armchair to hit the court right. the dead body it's not yes. just one case I think it's not just two I think there were more than that uh, uh, a lot of people have talked about that but that and really in fact, yeah, there's, there's in that picture if you look closely there's another body hanging from another tree right 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 at least two so mm -hmm. um, I think what is what we see in the Thai society right now if you look at the discourse in social media and even on uh, on the yeah. TV you start to see that the right wing uh, sort of uh, conservative uh, propaganda 
is really gearing everything toward hatred so much so that uh, you know right now people start talking about okay you are uh, talking bad you are criticizing the country you don't love the country you don't deserve to be in the country you should go away or in the case of Sanam Luong you criticize the king well they use the term score which may be true uh, in a sense but scolding is nothing is not a crime right criticizing is not a crime right and nobody no one deserves to be killed to be hated simply right. because he or she voices his own opinion against anybody or anything if it is illegal then that person can be you know charged with right. whatever law that we have and thailand has ample uh, you know articles in the laws that that will uh, you know take care of all these people uh, which doesn't mean that I, 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 I agree with all these laws and article 112 and a lot of new laws that have been issued by the unelected or in other words appointed or the junta appointed uh, 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 parliament you know uh, so I think uh, if you care about Thailand international organizations activists civil society we have to really look at the bottom of you know uh, of uh, the movement right now i think it's going to lead to another massacre in which who knows it might be similar to rwanda i don't want thailand to get to that point but if you continue to allow uh, you know the propaganda and the discourses uh, surrounding uh, what happens in politics that goes so far as being hate speech you know, unlimited hate speech by especially it is right it is legal it is uh, cool if you were you know a royalist if you were naturalistic if you were junta uh, supporters you know and this is a trend that we must stop somehow yeah. And, and uh, I, I should have mentioned Ekachai uh, was a member of the people who won elections. And he was uh, very famous because um, there was a, a fun song about uh, fortune cookie. Mm -hmm. And he, uh, it was a, a, a song by a, a girl group, a girl band, and they had some cute dancing well he did that dance uh -huh, and, uh -huh. you know dance by these little teenage girls but this very very tall man is doing the same dance and it was like completely hilarious you know and so he, yeah. turned the, he turned the pro-democracy marches into this big fun thing and um anyways so um unfortunately he was is successful in some ways drawing attention to him and um, you know basically so what he is guilty of is is being very entertaining and, right and dancing to music while right. uh, reminding people the date of the election that that has already you know been announced by the junta and right so these people say we want elections we're reminding mm. you that the election is promised for such and such a date and they go marching down the street singing songs. Right. That, that's the crime. That is basically See? the crime for which he is being beaten uh, by people coming out from every direction. And if, you know, people said, you know, each time they're, they're beating at his head, you know, a person can only take so much of that before there's going to be a, a real disaster. And that's what, you know, whoever's doing this is trying to make these attacks so small that, nobody will will you know international attention is not going to be focused on someone who got fish sauce thrown at them mm -hmm. but mm -hmm. when they do it over and over and over and over it's just a wonder that he can go on being as uh, brave as he is right. and he by his own admission is not a fighter he no you know, he's not a physical fighter and he says that he deals with it by running away and that people don't want to be around him because they don't know when someone's going to jump out and attack him right and so this is just pure bullying this is just pure cowardly bullying somebody who won't fight back right right 
very true. In fact, uh, yeah, the word entertaining is really, really his guilt. You know, right. he is seen as you know punishable for being too, you know, too entertaining. That's the right word. But uh, in the eyes of all these abusers or the people who order the the uh, the harassment. Uh, I think he probably may have been seen as too loud, too provocative, too daring, and too annoying to them. But Ekachai uh, is nothing, uh, is, is anything, you know, uh, you know uh, entertaining, uh, daring, uh, uh, pragmatically funny. Uh, but, uh, you know, he's not, he's everything, all this, but violent. He has never been violent, and he is not illegal. Uh -huh. So he doesn't deserve s such a treatment that he has, you know, uh, uh, has been receiving lately, abusive one, you know. So uh, yeah, it has to has to stop, and I'm I'm, I'm pleased to see the head news headline, and now the uh, attorneys, I think. Uh, uh, now have come up and informed the police that they need to uh, look for the perpetrator because this is far too outrageous at this point in time. And it's and about time somebody comes question. out and says something like this. If this is not state-sponsored, then why doesn't the state come out and say to stop? All they have to do is say, is tell their people, stop attacking Ekachai Hong Kong one that is in their their power it's in their power if they are not the ones assassinating the dissidents to to say stop witch hunting lays majesty people but it you know we know it is them um uh it is very 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 almost definitely state sponsored and not vigilantes who are killing the um the activists overseas. Well, out There's of nine acts, and it could be both. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, that doctor, yes. uh, Rian Thong Nen Na, he has come out blunt, and you can see in his eyes, he's got, you know, right. a really uh, malicious intent in his eyes. The way right. I see it, last time he was confronting with Ekachai, and soon right. after that, you know, um, he got. Uh, attacked and then uh, his car got burned, you know. So, and you know what? That's another thing that Ekachai did was he went to this vigilante leader who uh, has an organization called the Rubbish Collection Organization, right. where he basically um, uh, names names, has his, his group go and search the internet for anyone insulting the monarchy and calls them out, and then you know, announces where they live and all this kind of stuff. And, and this is a medical that, doctor. And a, this yeah. guy is a medical doctor by the name Rian Thong Nen Na. Uh -huh. And the Thai Alliance for Human Rights sent a letter to the entire international community saying that this guy is a human rights abuser. Right. So you should not allow him to travel into your country. Right. I mean, and in fact, he, he threatened a John Chupong. Yeah. Um, and I, I've read that threat. He's threatened Surachai Saidan before he he was killed. He 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 said that he would lead a, a group of men across the uh, border make to get yeah. him. And so uh, he does cross over the line from just pointing people out to saying, "I'm going to come and get you." Right. So why is he allowed to uh, continue his operations? Why doesn't, you know, the uh, dictator say, um, we don't approve of this, mm. you know, instead well, of just saying, we didn't do it, say, we didn't do it, and also all of you vigilantes cut it out. Right. They don't say it at all. They, they, their silence means that they approve. Right, and in fact, indeed, silence means approval. And in fact, uh, you, when you talk about, you know, something like this, then uh, please be reminded that in 2009, 2010, people being on the street, you know, and the, the army approaching them with uh, malicious, murderous intent, nobody stopped them. And in fact, some Thai folks, some, some, 
some Thai crowds out there uh, even say, okay, you know what, these people deserve to die. You know, they deserve it, well deserved. Go ahead, kill them. All these buffaloes, red buffaloes. See, I mean, if you look at Thailand, land of smiles, a lot of beautiful beaches, great food, uh, easy going, laid back lifestyle, cheap stuff. You would go and visit Thailand. But if you care about Thailand, I think now is the time that you need to turn your attention to all these, all these, uh, you know, wrongdoings, these violent acts that are taking place in a Thai society. If there's a way that you can help stop it, you can help, uh, you know, uh, spread the news so that uh, you can at least, you know, uh, like, uh, 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 how do you call it, give feedback to, to the folks out there. If you are in the media, report the news or dig into some stories. I think right now a person like Ekachai has to be the highlight of uh, the uh, international news. I think yeah. they need to look into this guy's life and then human rights organizations should make sure they step in and then put uh, Ekachai under their arms because he needs it. If you allow all these acts to go further, one day Ekachai is going to be a victim dead, right. you know, uh, because if they keep doing this, the person who is hired to do it maybe get sick of having to hurt this person over and over, and eventually may they may just cross the line and kill Ekachai, you know. Uh -huh. So we have to stop it before it actually happens. It's going to be a sad disaster. A, a person like Ekachai, he is not dangerous to anybody. Right. He's just a voice out there that is daring, that is righteous, I would say, yes. you know. So uh, let's do something about it. I, I pass this to all friends in the media and friends in human rights organizations and even ambassadors, you know, uh, in Thailand. Please save this life. Right. And, and one of the other thing I'd like to say is, is in, in the United States, I still uh, run into people people who try to be very liberal and sometimes right. these are the people who are so liberal and so left-wing and when I tell them about this situation they'll go yes but that's their culture and we can't criticize their culture and no this isn't culture no. this is just bullying Indeed. this is just bullying it's un 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 unacceptable has, has in power, yeah uh, it's unacceptable in I'm sorry <laughs> I'm sorry <laughs> yeah it's unacceptable in any standard I mean yeah and it, it, it's it's bullying and it's uh, uh, well I've forgotten the word but um, it's very similar to the oppression of black people in the United States mm. by white people it can go on and on for another hundred years or in the next five years, there could be a civil rights revolution and it could be over. Or, like I said, it could go on for 100 years. It's a problem that needs to be solved. Indeed. It needs to be addressed somehow soon. Right. right. All right. So, yeah, this is, I think this is a, 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 great, uh, a great point about Ekachai. I think I, it deserves to be uh, in the attention of the, the whole nation and uh -huh. of the international community to if you allow something small like this to keep on going and going and going right. and the people who have done it don't feel responsible they don't feel that they'll be held and uh, held accountable at all i think right. that is really a dangerous culture right and yeah. and the same thing happened in the united states for you know many 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 uh, you know decades um was uh lynching Right. They, white people would extrajudicially uh, kill by hanging, usually black people, but it was people who they thought didn't know their place. And so a lot of times it was somebody who was actually doing very well, uh, was very successful in their society, but um, somebody would say, well, okay, you think you're so so great you think you're equal to us and that's why they would attack him mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and so it wasn't even troublemakers you know in any sense that were being attacked it was people that were just minding their own business who wanted to be equal 
Mm -hmm. and they were stomped back down. And I think this is what's happening to Ekachai. He's not demanding that he, um, you know, be superior to anybody. He just wants to uh, be respected. Right. And some people, you know, are, are like, no, you should be oppressed. And mm. it's basically about that. You know, he has a lot of self-respect, and that's what, what, what makes people mad, have it, that he has so much self-respect. Right, right. Okay, and looks like, um, yeah, we have spent one hour, but I think, uh, okay. it's, yeah, we've got uh, uh, some interesting substances. Okay. okay. Uh, yeah, nice. I think, uh, well, we are, this, we are a little rusty, right? I mean, especially me. Yes. Uh, but uh, this is just the second episode. I think uh, uh, in upcoming episodes, uh, you know, there'll be things that we can report to our friends. Right. So uh, for you, our friends out there, uh, uh, you know, follow our channel, and then uh, we keep you posted of uh, the development in the Thai politics. It's only going to get more heated, more confrontational, and um, I hope not too violent. But I, I, I don't think it's avoidable. It's going to happen. But, you know, what we can, the little things that we can do over here, and you can also help, maybe, you know, can prevent massacre. And um, hopefully, you know, uh, it will be resolved with little violence. But the oppression and the violence against uh, pro-democracy and, uh, you know, progressive civilians uh, uh, in Thailand has uh, has been seen by us Thailand's women rights as already uh, you know uh, too much at this point in time so I ask you all to pay attention to Thailand and if you can in any way do help and okay oh, oh you want us uh, I of course I would like you to uh, close the program and please Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> all right. Uh, I guess I guess you you said it uh, perfectly. I I think, and I, I also want to say that that a lot of the people who are being attacked are like um, civil rights leaders, and um, a lot of the people who are being attacked are really the hope for a better future. So. Um, that's that's the situation right now all right thank you very much and that's all for today thank you everybody sawadee krab sawadee krab